I'm going to turn things over to Zach right now. And um, here you go, Zach. What's your first question for John? Oh, good evening. Um, well, me being a big fan of heavy metal, and one of my favorite genres in heavy metal is New Wave or British heavy metal, I must say Raven are probably one of the pioneers of that era. And well, I was just like, it's, it's mighty fine of you to say that to me, sir. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been an Englishman all my life. <laughs> And, I'm, I'm uh, such a swain, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> and like I say, it, it's truly, you know, bands that, uh, that that came out of that were just phenomenal. And basically, I know you guys go back, and if you can just give us a good history of, you know, when you started and who's in the band and, and how it formed and, and back in, in England, I guess, in Newcastle. Uh, it was back in 1843 when we had Harold Krusty McWhorter on drums, <laughs> Scotchy McGee on guitar, I remember that. It sounds like Spinal Tap, doesn't it? We formed the band when we were kids back in Newcastle, England, up in the northeast of England in 1974. And then we decided to buy instruments and learn how to play. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. And we played our first show in 1975 at our high school, basically. And had half covers and half originals. And went through just like Spinal Tap, we mentioned, there about 400 drummers before we settled on a lineup in about 1977. And we ended up playing a lot of the local bars and working men's clubs around the area, which was a great grounding on learning stagecraft because most of the audiences were real abusive and tough, and you really had to you know, get in their face. Sounds and, like the typical deliver. background of most bands, I guess, uh, that had to cut their teeth up, teeth and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's probably something that doesn't happen so much these days. So, you know, it's, somebody does a demo and it's all polished up in. Pro Tools, and it's like, okay, you guys are great. Here's a stage. Get on there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, any originals from dating from back then? Like some of your starting to form the your own oldest, songs. The oldest song, and we still play it quite often, is Inquisitor, which I think was written in 1976. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It still that sounds current. So there you go. And that is a great song. I don't know if we have it to play it later on. I've got a version of it hiding on here or not. Oh, I do. The old one, but yeah, I got it. That is a classic thing, and I think later on you guys actually did it, and I think Udo Dirk Schneider did co-vocals for the Udo Dirk Schneider from Accept, of course. And uh, I know briefly back then, one of your drummers was a drummer by the name of Sean Taylor, who went yep. on to be in, in a band called Satan, another great New Wave and British heavy metal band. And also, I think he played on the Blitzkrieg he record, did. which was also one of the pioneering records of that yeah, Sean's time frame. A, Sean's a good lighter. I know he was living out in California, but I've heard he went back to Newcastle, so um, I haven't talked to him in many a year. And I've actually been in touch with a guy who was playing drums before him, a guy called Mick Kenworthy, who played with us for like two years, from like 76 to 77. And he's still playing drums, and we might see him when we go over to the UK in October. Oh, wow. Good guy. Yeah. That should be a lot of fun. Oh, definitely. That's long overdue. <laughs> And then how did you guys meet, uh, the, of course, the legendary Rob Wacko Hunter? Well, there was uh, this one, there was a couple of music stores, but the one music store we used to hang out in Newcastle, there was a guy called Des, an Irish guy who played drums. He used to play with Gary Moore way back when, which was his claim to fame. And he knew we were looking for a drummer. I was like, oh, all right, Sean's no longer with the band, so, but uh, there's this gentleman, I think he, he, liked him. he likes the kind of music you do. And we had this rehearsal hall in this, it was like an underground car park in Newcastle. Dreadful place, disgusting, filthy and ugly. And this guy turned up with his drums, a former brother did, and set up in the tours were jamming. And I was just like, whoa, was something here. You know, we clicked right off. And Rob was a you know, very talented guy. He left-handed, which was odd. Never saw anyone play left-handed drums before, except Ian Pace. <laughs> and played guitar and had ideas and was full of energy and we had a second guitar player at the time and it just wasn't working out and we brought that up ahead within a couple of weeks and just said hey Pete you're out sorry it's always a fun thing to do uh, and then we you know it was like my god we're going to be a three piece this is unusual and it, it was just that's when the band really came into its own because my brother was able to blossom because he had so much more space to do stuff. I had so much more space to do stuff. And being in a three piece, it's like the best of all possible worlds. You know, you've, you've got to be economical, but you have the room to, to overplay <laughs> as much as you want, I guess. You know, and it's like, this is my turf. 
I'm not got four people playing guitar or three people or two people playing guitar. This is my part. And you do your part. And it's you know. Yeah, and, and I must say, like the first time when I when I heard Raven on a record, I I really thought you guys were like a two guitar band because you had a, such a full sound. Mark Gallagher, your brother, of course, definitely did have like a full full range sound coming in at you from every speaker and so forth. Yeah, and again, usually there's two guitars that we played on on a studio recording. Most of the ones, I mean, some of the ones we did were cut live and left that way, at least on the second album, definitely. But uh, people would always compliment us live, where, wow, it's, you don't need another guitar player, because, I mean, we'd worked on a sound to make it full, when it was just, you know, just the three of us playing. So roughly what time frame was that, when you guys decided to be a three-man band? That was uh, very late in 79, I think Rob must have joined, maybe like November, December 79. And we were playing a couple of gigs in 1980, early on, and it was a it's this place called Bambras in Newcastle. It's a music hall. I mean, it was about the size of this room and that room, and maybe about 20 foot wide. It was incredibly narrow, and it was a you know like a like a vaudeville type of thing from back from the 20s. They used to do that in there, and they were putting bands on. And we played and one night. Tom Noble and Graham Thompson, who were the guys managing the Tigers of Pantang, and the Tigers of Pantang, they all watched in and watched our show, and really liked it, and Tom said, how do you guys like to do a single? What do you mean? Well, I'm working with these guys that need records, and they're looking for bands. How do you like to come for it? Sure, let's do it. So we went down to Wall's End, which is near the coast, Newcastle, that's where Sting come from, and he actually recorded in the same studio. Wow, did not know that. Book. And it's an old, as I was saying before, it's an old movie theatre that they took over. And it's all the, the dressing rooms. There's basically, that's where they made the studio. The other part was turned into a bingo hall. So it's all stone, stairs and what have you. And we went in there and cut, what did we do? We did Don't Need Your Money, we did Wiped Out. And I think we probably did Let It Rip. But just live to two track. And they loved it, so we came in and recorded those songs properly, rearranged them slightly, and that was our first single. And we had the extra track, Let It Rip, which ended up on a compilation down the line. And we got great reaction from that. That was played on Radio 1, uh, which was like the main radio station in England. This guy called John Peel, who died quite recently, he was very influential. He had the show where he just played new music didn't care what it was as long as it was new and Ozzy Osbourne heard it goes, I like that I want those guys to play with me and that's how we ended up opening four shows with Ozzy Osbourne wow. his first two which was cool and we got a you know pretty quick off the bat we were playing the clubs we used to play and then we were playing all the originals and doing great with that and then we just started opening for White Snake, Motorhead, Ozzy, Iron Maiden and just doing these club things all over the country. That sounds that sounds fantastic. I mean, that was a good break. 